You too. It's Tone. I'm back with another one for you. This one is probably going to be like an hour. It's like 25 slides and shit. I'm going to try to get through it as fast as I can. But this is on the right to travel. So this is the common law right to travel. You guys voted for it. And it just so happened to come up next in the book that I was doing the common law book and uh, reading anyway. So it worked the fuck out. So I'm just going to read the fucking thing, right? I'll throw any commentary that I have in there. Try to keep the shit brief. Because we're going to see how many people we can get to actually listen to this shit for a fucking hour. When you guys are used to 10 minute videos already. So let's get into this shit. This one here, you guys are going to love that. So this is uh, this is an actual affidavit. If you guys need this book, hit me up. You guys are having problems with your driver's license and people are pulling you over. You got cases. This is the thing to fucking hit them with. Hit me up. All right. In the district court, the number judicial uh, circuit uh city division whatever this is like a template here the memorandum will be construed to comply with provisions necessary to establish presumed fact pursuant to rule 301 federal rules of evidence and att uh, attending state rules should interested parties fail to rebut any given allegation or fact or matter of law addressed herein with spec uh, spec specific specificity specificity the position will be construed as adequate to meet requirements of judicial notice, thus preserving fundamental law. Matters addressed herein, if not rebutted, will be construed to have general applications. This memorandum addresses the issue uh, of state statutes, regulations, and licensing of constitutional right uh, to free travel upon the public roads of an Oregon citizen, but this applies for everybody, okay? So, overview of American people's right to travel. If ever a judge understood the American people's right to use the public roads, it was Justice Tolman of the Supreme Court of the State of Washington. Justice Tolman said, complete freedom of the highways is so old and well established a blessing that we have forgotten the days of the robber barons and toll roads. And yet, under an act like this, arbitrarily administered, the, the highways may be completely monopolized. If though lack of interest uh, and people submit, then they may look to see the sac the the sacred of their of their liberties taken from them one by one uh, by more or less rapid encroachment. Robert versus Department of Public Works, eighteen Wash, one thirty three, one forty seven. So, uh, so, all right. So that's that, and uh. So that makes reference to that. And I mean, one of the, you know, one of the major things to, to keep in mind is that, um, you know, they, they have tolls out here and shit like that. Those are not fucking legal to be, to be putting tolls out there like that. You guys do not have to pay those fucking tolls at all. You know, they, I, I mean, they got some serious balls pulling that, pulling that bullshit. But anyway, moving on, right? The words of Justice Tolman ring most prophetically in the ears of the American citizens throughout the country road today as the use of the public roads has been monopolized by the very entity which has been empowered to stand guard over our freedoms that of the state government so so two your rights uh, the most sacred of liberties of which Justice Tolman spoke was the personal liberty which have been uh, placed in the conflict by by the plaintiff the defendant of personal liberty is uh, personal liberty or the right of enjoyment of life and liberty is one of the fundamental and natural rights which has been protected by its inclusion as a guarantee in the various constitutions which is not derived from or dependent on the u.s constitution uh, which may not be submitted to a vote or may not depend on the outcome of an election it is one of the most sacred and valuable rights as sacred as the rights of private property as regarded in uh, 16 cjs constitutional law uh, section 202 page 987 and neither is a judge's ruling on any on any of your fucking constitutional rights either it doesn't matter what the fuck a judge says about somebody's constitutional rights they're not gonna sit here and fucking try to in interpret what the fucking meaning is the shit is goddamn clear as fuck bro it's written in black and white it doesn't matter how the fuck do you choose to construe the goddamn language to fit whatever the fuck narrative that you decide to try to throw out there and get the fuck out of here with that try again bro it says what the fuck it says all right so this kind of, and it doesn't even matter what the fuck that that says because the constitution just in general only makes reference to rights that were given to you by the fucking creator it doesn't we we can set that shit on fire right the fuck now and see what the fuck happens 
You know what I'm saying? It doesn't even matter to be to be 100% real with you. That shit is only making reference to rights that you already had. Your rights don't come from a piece of paper or what somebody fucking thinks of the fucking writing on it. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? So this, this concept is further amplified by the definition of personal liberty. Personal liberty largely consists of the right of locomotion to go where and uh, where and when one pleases, only so far as restrained as the rights of others uh, may make it necessary for the welfare of, of all other citizens. So unless you're encroaching on the rights of somebody else is the only time that they have the uh, authority to encroach on your personal liberties, right? So the right of the citizen to travel upon the public highways and to transport his property thereon by horse-drawn carriage, wagon, or automobile is not a mere privilege uh, which may be permitted or prohibited at will by the common right which he has under his right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Under this constitutional guarantee, one may therefore, under normal conditions, travel at his inclination among uh, along the public highways or in public places while conducting himself in an orderly and decent manner, neither interfering nor disturbing with somebody else's rights he will be protected not only in his person but in his safe conduct all right so that's just constitutional law as well and further personal liberty consists of the power of locomotion of changing uh situations of removing one's person to wherever the place one's inclination may direct without imprisonment or restraint unless by due process of law blackstone's commentary uh and so they're making reference here to different case law and uh rulings that have been made on topics such as this right so uh, Justice Tolman was considered uh, about the state prohibiting the citizen from the most sacred of his liberties, the right of movement. The right of uh, moving oneself from place to place without threat of imprisonment, the right to use the public roads in the ordinary course of life. When the state allows the formation of a corporation that may control its creation, establishing guidelines, statutes for its operation, charters, corporations may use the road in the, in the course of business uh, do not use the road in the ordinary course of life and there is a difference right so if you're operating in commerce then that's then, then that's different so there is a difference between a corporation and a live living individual the united states supreme court has stated all right so they make a you know they make a clear observation and statement of the fact that they understand that there is a difference between the two okay not that it matters if they fucking did or didn't but they at least fucking acknowledge the fact that there is all right so we are of the opinion that there is a clear distinction in this in this particular between an individual and a corporation and that the latter has no right uh, to refuse to submit its books or papers for examination on the suit of the state. The individual may stand upon his constitutional rights as a citizen. He is entitled to carry on his private business in his own way. His power to contract is unlimited. He owes no duty to the state or to his neighbors to divulge his business or to open his doors to investigation so far as it may tend to incriminate him. He owes no such duty to the state since he receives nothing therefrom. Beyond the protection of his life, liberty, and property, his rights, uh, his rights as such are the law of the land, long antecedent to the organization of the state, and he can only... Uh, and can only be taken from him in due process of law and in accordance with the Constitution. Among his rights are the refusal to incriminate himself and the immunity of himself and his property from arrest, seizure, except under warrant of law. He owes nothing to the public so long as he does not trespass upon their rights. Okay? So, unless there's been a crime committed, they have no fucking authority to even come fuck with you in general. If they pull you over, then they have to prove that you were, in fact, operating in commerce at that moment in time that they decided to cause a fucking disturbance, breach the peace, and fucking activate their emergency lights, okay? So, upon the other hand, the corporation is a creature of the state. It is presumed to be incorporated for the benefit of the people. It receives certain special privileges and franchises and hold them subject to the laws of the state and the limitations of its charter. Its right to act as a corporation are only preserved so long as it obeys the laws of its creation. There is a reserved right in the legislature to invent, to investigate its contracts and find out whether it has exceeded its own powers. It would be a strange anomaly to hold the state having chartered a corporation to make use of certain franchises could not in exercise of its sovereignty inquire how those franchises have been employed and whether or not they have been abused. The demand for the production of corporate books and papers for that for that purpose. So corporations engaged in mercantile equity fall under the purview of the state's admiralty jurisdiction, and the public at large must be protected from their activities as they uh, as the corporations are engaged in business for profit. 
right? So that's the only jurisdiction that they have and the only authority that they've ever been given is to regulate commerce, right? And they try to find different ways to fucking force their corporate policy onto the private people and that shit is out of motherfucking hand, bro. Out of hand. Out of fucking line. So based on the fundamental grounds that the sovereign state has the plenary control over the streets and the highways in the exercise of its police power uh, may absolutely prohibit the use of the streets as a place for the prosecution of private business for gain. They all recognize the fundamental distinction between the ordinary right of the citizen to use the street uh, in the usual way and the use and the use of the place of business as a main instrumentality of business for private gain. The former is a common right. The latter is extraordinary use. Right. So they have no uh, what do you call it? They don't have a right to operate as a fucking business out here in the streets. Now, mind you, all these police officers and state police vehicles and all that shit that you see, they are called vehicles because they are fucking commercially using the vehicle, uh, the, the streets at that point. They do not have a right to be operating out here. You can pull their fucking permits. You can pull their permits to operate. They can fucking park those cars because you guys paid for them. And they can go fucking jump on motherfucking um, roller skates. You know what I'm saying? Think about who, who who's really getting the fucking privilege out here, bro. It's not us. All right? So as to the former legislative power combined to regulation as the as the latter is plenary and extends even to absolute prohibition since the use of the streets by a common carrier uh in the prosecution of its business is such not a right but a mere privilege and it is a privilege for them to operate right it is a privilege and you can just pull their fucking permits to operate and they can go the fuck home you know what i'm saying <laughs> whatever the fuck that they even came from who who even fucking knows where, these, where half these dicks even came from so it will be necessary to review earlier cases and legal authority uh, in order to reach lawfully correct theory dealing with this right or privilege. Defendant will attempt to reach a sound conclusion as to what is a right to use the road and what is a privilege to use the road. Once reaching this determination, we shall then apply those positions to modern case decision. Okay. So... Let's go ahead and get into the next slide. So, where rights secured by the constitutions are involved, there can be no rulemaking or legislation which would abrogate them. Miranda versus Arizona, okay? So, they cannot make a code, statute, regulation, etc. that is contrary to the constitution. It doesn't work. They can write whatever the fuck they want to write in them corny ass books that they love so much. That shit has nothing to do with you at all. At all. The claim and exercise of a constitutional right cannot be converted into a crime. So you cannot be exercising a constitutionally guaranteed right which simply makes reference to a uh, uh, already fucking existing right that was given to you by the goddamn creator. These motherfuckers can't write nothing that is contrary to it. A repugnant law like that is void on its fucking face and whoever the fuck wrote that in my personal opinion should not even have that hand that they fucking signed that with to be a hundred percent real with you they that that hand should be fucking removed so there can be no sanction or penalty imposed upon one because of this exercise constitutional rights all right so streets and highways are established and maintained for the purpose of travel and transportation by the public such travel may be for business or pleasure yeah, it can be for whatever the fuck you want. You don't have to fucking explain to these dickheads even where you're going. Pull you over. Hey, where are you coming from? Bro, mind your own fucking business. Then they want to ask you for your fucking ID with your address on it. Yeah, suck a dick, bro. You know what I'm saying? Give me your fucking address with your ID on it. Give me your address and I'll definitely give you mine, okay? You want to play that fucking game? You don't even know these fucking people. You don't know who the fuck that dude even is. Get the fuck out of here. How about that? Get the fuck out of here. How about that? You know what I'm saying? So... The use of the highway for the purpose of travel and transportation is not a mere privilege, but a common and fundamental right of which the public and the individual cannot be rightfully deprived of. Okay, so the right of the citizen to travel upon the public highways and to transport his property thereon, either by drawn horse or carriage or by automobile, is not a mere privilege which uh, which the city can prohibit or permit at will, but a common right that he has under the right of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. 
A citizen has a right to travel upon the public highway by automobile and a citizen cannot be rightfully deprived of his liberty. So where is this misconception that the use of the public road is only a privilege? And, you know, and, I'm, and I mean, it's funny as fuck too, because when you go to the registry, right, and they want to act like they're giving out fucking privileges, well, who the fuck are you? Who the fuck are you? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. So, for while a citizen has the right to travel upon the public highways and to transport his property thereon, the right does not extend to the use of the highways, either in whole or in part, as a place for private gain. For the latter purpose, no person has a vested right to use the highways of the state for a privilege or a license which the legislature may uh, grant or withhold at their discretion. Yeah, fucking right, bro. They're all fucking employees of a goddamn corporation, not to mention the fact that they're fucking public servants and you how you gonna tell me a fucking servant has the fucking right to tell me what the fuck i can and can't do and where i can and can't go are you fucking out of your mind bro are you fucking cr for real like are you fucking out of your mind get the fuck out of here so here the courts held a citizen has the right to travel upon the public highways but that he did not have the right to conduct business on the highway uh on this on this point of law all authorities are unanimous and i and i would even fucking agree with that okay right all right so here too, the courts has held that we think correctly, and while a citizen has the right to travel upon the public highways and to transport his property therein, the right does, and we'll see what comes after that. So it says the right does not extend to the use of the highways, either in whole or in part as a place of business for private gain. All right. So you don't have the right to use it for a fucking business, but you absolutely 100% for sure can drive that motherfucker to do what the fuck you need to do. Absolutely. So the right of the citizen to travel upon the highway and to transport his property thereon in the ordinary course of life and business differ radically and obviously from, from one who makes the highway his place of business for private gain in the running of a stagecoach or a fucking omnibus. All right. So what is this right of the citizen which differs so radically and obviously from one who uses the highway as a place of business to better enlighten us? Justice Tolman of the Supreme Court of Washington and State versus City of Spokane Supra. The court also noted a very radical and obvious difference, but went on to explain just what the difference is. The former is the usual and ordinary right of the citizen, common right to all, while the latter is special, unusual, and extraordinary. This distinction, elementary and fundamental in its character, is recognized by all authorities, okay? Except the fucking assholes that think that they have power that they don't, all right? And I don't know who the fuck lied to them, or if they don't know how to read, but I'm pretty sure that they signed the oath to uphold the Constitution. Did any of these assholes read that shit before they signed it? Either way, it's not your fucking problem if they did or they didn't because they fucking signed it, all right? So they can be held liable personally, publicly, and privately, all right? So this position does not hang pre precariously upon the few cases, but has been proclaimed by the imperative array of uh, cases ranging from the state courts to the federal courts. And I've even called the Supreme Court myself to speak with the clerks, and they all fucking back this shit up too as well. So fuck all these clowns that are over here in these fucking fake ass district courts and all these fucking corny ass state courts and shit talking this dumb shit. They do not have that authority. All right. And when you drag these fucking cunts into into uh, what the fuck is it called? Into the Supreme Court. They just regular ass people in there and nobody can save them in there. No, none of their friends can save them in there. Right. So the right of the citizen to travel upon the highway and to transport his property they're on in the ordinary course of life and business differs radically and obviously from the one who makes the highway his place of business and uses it for private gain in the running of a stagecoach or omnibus. The former is the usual and ordinary right of, of the citizen, uh, a right common to all, while the latter is special, unusual, and extraordinary. The right of the citizen to travel upon the public highways to transport his property thereon in the ordinary course of life and business is a common right which has under the right to uh, enjoy to enjoy life and liberty and to acquire and possess property and to pursue happiness and safety it includes the right in doing so the use of ordinary and usual and, and usual conveyances of the day and under existing mode of travel including the right to drive a horse carriage wagon thereupon operate an automobile thereon uh usual in the ordinary purpose of life and business 
And this is where they try to trick you into believing that you drive a vehicle when in all reality you drive a fucking automobile. If it's not a bus, a truck, a fucking taxi, then it's an automobile. If it's a vehicle used for the for operating in commerce, which would be all of the, all everything I just mentioned prior to automobile, it's going to be a fucking vehicle. And you know who else drives a fucking vehicle? The police drive a fucking vehicle for commercial use. So who the fuck's really having the privilege here? Huh? That can be taken away too, as a matter of fact. All right? So you can take their vehicles away if they want to start acting like fucking assholes. Right? And see how far they get on foot. So there is no dissent among various authorities as to this position. Everybody fucking agrees. Wouldn't matter if they didn't agree. It is what the fuck it is. You know what I'm saying? It is what the fuck it is, bro. Don't matter how anybody feels about that shit. At all. The various constitutions which is not derived from nor dependent on the U.S. Constitution. It is one of the most sacred and valuable rights. Remember the words of the Justice Tolman. As sacred as the right to private property and is regarded as inalienable. So they can't even fuck with that. But they do. As we can see, and mind you, they all got fucking notified in 2015, 2016 uh, about, about all that. That's why they stopped fucking arresting people for driving without a fucking license. But they're still taking their fucking... And shit even happened to me. They still told my fucking truck and all that bullshit. But I'm not, but I'm not done with these fucking clowns either. So, we'll see who gets the fucking last lap here. But mind you, you know, had that shit not happened, I probably wouldn't be here right now reading this shit to you. So everything happens for a reason. I'm grateful. I learned my lesson. Now it's time to teach some lessons. All right? So that so that's where we go from here. When you're done learning them, then you can teach them. So and everybody's got karma to pay, so you just got to throw that shit right back at them. So as we can see, the distinction between a right to use the public roads and a privilege to use the public roads is drawn upon the line of using the road as a place of business, and the various state courts have held so. But uh, what have the U.S. courts held on this point? First, it is well established the law that the highways of the state and the public property, the, uh, the primary and preferred uses for the private per uh purposes and that the use is of the purposes of uh gain is special and and extraordinary so if you're using it to uh to make money or for the purposes of operating in commerce then that is a extraordinary use which you would have to have a license for or something of that nature okay so generally at least the legislature may prohibit or condition as it as it see fits so what is their privilege to use the roads by now it should be apparent even to the learn that an attempt to use the road and as a place of business is a privilege. The distinction must be drawn between traveling upon uh, and transporting one's property upon the public roads, which is a right, using the public roads as a place of business or a main instrumentality, uh, instrumentality of business, which is a privilege. That's the difference. So the roads are constructed and maintained at public expense uh, and no person therefore can insist that he has or may acquire a vested right to their use or carrying on a commercial business. Okay, so when the public highways are made the place of business, the state has the right to regulate the use and the interest and safety uh, and the uh, convenience of the public as well. Preservation of the highways. That's why you're paying excise tax and all that. That shit is not meant for you to fucking pay. Excise taxes for trucks, police police vehicles and shit like that. Do these fucking assholes pay, pay any taxes for that shit? No, you do. Why the fuck is that when it's only supposed to be them pay, paying the taxes on that? Think about that. All right, so the state's right to regulate such is is based upon the nature of the business and the use of the highway and connection therewith. So we know we know of no inherent right to use the highway for commercial purposes. The highway is the primarily for the use of the public and in the interest of the public state may prohibit or regulate the use of the highways for personal gain. There should be considerable uh, considerable authority on a subject considering the importance of this deprivation of the liberty of the individual using the roads in ordinary course of life business. However, it should be noted that the extensive research has not turned up. Uh, let me just mark this fucking next slide. Uh, authority acknowledging the state's power to convert the individual's right to travel upon the public roads into a privilege. So they do not have that. There's not been one case at all. Even if there was a fucking case that was ruled against it or for it, uh, they do not have the power to convert somebody's right into a fucking privilege. The same, the same with the right to bear arms. They don't, they can't fucking tell you a goddamn thing. The way that they even got around the shit with the fucking firearms is by calling an arm a firearm. 
You change the fucking name. What the fuck's the difference? I'll tell you right now. A firearm is uh, regulated by Congress because it has a serial number on it and because they named it a firearm. A uh, arm is the same fucking thing, but without a serial number and something that was not made by a commercial company. Only fucking difference. Okay? So now you know. Make your own. <laughs> Make your own. So, therefore, it must be concluded that the citizen does have a right to travel and transport his property upon the public highways and roads and the exercise of his right is not a privilege all right it's not a fucking privilege they are the ones that were granted the fucking privilege to uh watch over everybody's shit and look what the fuck happened yeah that went great right so in order to understand the correct application of the statute in question we must first define the terms of the uh used in connection with this point of law as will be shown many terms used today not in their legal context mean that we assume that they mean uh has a resulting in the misapplication of state statutes and so like this is what they're doing they're changing definition of words and shit like that applying them to fucking laws that were written a hundred years fucking prior to that they're giving the words a new definition trying to apply a new um addiction so they didn't even have to change the laws they changed the dictionaries they changed the fucking meanings of the words in the new dictionaries to affect the old laws you see what they did there come on man let's be real let's be real so automobile and motor vehicle there is a clear distinction between an automobile and a motor vehicle an automobile has defined as the word automobile uh denotes a pleasure vehicle designed for the transportation of persons on highways while the distinction is made clear between the two as the courts have stated a motor vehicle or automobile for hire is a motor vehicle other than a automobile stage used for the transportation of persons which um remuneration is received so if you're not getting paid literally at the time you're not collecting fear fare for driving somebody around taxi bus whatever then you're driving a fucking automobile okay so the distinction is made very clear in the united states code title 18 uh clause 31 motor vehicle means every description or other contrivance propelled or drawn by mechanical power and used for commercial purposes on the highways in the transportation of passengers or passengers and or property used for commercial purposes means the carriage of persons or property for any fare, fee, rate, charge, or other consideration or directly and indirectly in connection with any business or other un uh, undertaking intended for profit, right? So you're not uh, operating a fucking for-profit enterprise at that, at that point, but they're going to try to make you believe that you are by calling it a fucking vehicle, which is trying to give themselves the authority over your shit, which they don't fucking have. All right, so this is why you got to watch what the fucking words mean and don't answer their questions incorrectly. So clearly, an automobile is a private property in use for private purposes, while a motor vehicle is a machine which may be used upon the highways for trade, commerce, or hire. Travel. The term travel is a significant term and is defined as the term travel and traveler are usually construed in their broad and general sense. So as to include all those who rightfully use the highways uh, vertically okay so and who have on occasion to pass over them for the purpose of business convenience or pleasure all right so that is traveling traveler travel one who passes from one place to place whether for pleasure and uh in instruction business or or help travel to journey or to pass through or over as a country district road to go from one place to another whether on foot or horseback or in a conveyance as a train or automobile carriage ship or aircraft making a journey Therefore, the term travel or traveler refers to one who uses the conveyance to go from one place to another and include all those who use the highway as a matter of right. Not that all the definitions or phrase for hire never, never occurs. The term travel or traveler implies by definition one who uses the road as a means to move from one place to another. All right. So it's funny when these people try to be like, oh, you fucking changing the words you are. Look at you driving. Bro, if you're not literally fucking in the middle of collecting a fare, driving a truck, cab, or fucking anything like that, then you're fucking traveling, all right? Doesn't matter what the fuck you think or, or how you feel about it. It is what it is. So therefore, one who uses the road in the ordinary course of life and business for the purpose of travel and transportation is a traveler, okay? That's the difference. Now let's get into what the fucking word driver means because they always try to get you to be a driver operating a vehicle without a fucking license, right? You're operating a vehicle without a man, sh shut the fuck up. All right. These are all assholes who never studied law. Obviously never fucking picked up a dictionary. And 
think that they know what the fuck that they're talking about. Okay? So the term driver and contradict hang on, let me fucking move this shit. So in uh the term driver in contradiction to traveler as defined, driver, one employed is conducting a coach, carriage, wagon, or other vehicle, Bouvier's law. Notice that this definition includes one who is employed in conducting a vehicle. It should be self-evident that this person should not be traveling on a journey, uh, but is using the road as a place in the conduct of business. All right. Operator, you're driving. Oh, operating the vehicle without a fucking license. Yeah. Okay, bro. Oh, yeah. Okay, bro. So today we assume that the traveler is a driver and a driver is an operator. However, this is not the case. So we're about to break that shit down for you. All right. We're about to break it down for all you motherfuckers. I hope some of you stupid ass cops are watching too. You know what I'm saying? So you guys can fucking learn something instead of acting like you fucking know what you're talking about. So it will be observed from the language of the ordinance that a distinction is to be drawn between the terms operator and driver. The operator of the service car being the person who is licensed to have the car on the streets in the business or carrying passengers for hire, while the driver is one who actually drives the car. However, in the actual prosecution of business, uh, it was possible for the same person to be both the operator and the driver. Yeah, well, if you're operating commercially, what the fuck's the difference anyway? It doesn't even matter, does it? So you have to know the fucking definitions here. So to further clarify the definition of an operator, the court observed that this was a vehicle for hire and that it was uh, in the business of carrying passengers. This business would seem to uh, describe a person who was using the road as a place of business, or in other words, a person engaged in the privilege of using the motor vehicle for game, of uh, using the road for game. So this person then is further is a further clarification of the distinction mentioned earlier. Therefore, uh, traveling upon and transporting one's property upon the public roads as a matter of right meets the definition of traveler. Using the road as a place of business as a matter of privilege meets the definition of driver or operator or bull. Okay, so this is why they're going to have to prove that you were in fact operating uh, in the capacity of commerce or operating uh, as a as a commercial uh, enterprise or whatever have you. Okay, so and, th and so these are things that they try to fucking force you into believing that you are in order to justify their fucking encroachment on your fucking constitutional rights. Okay, so. Having defined the terms automobile, motor vehicle, traveler, driver, and operator, the next term is to define traffic. Traffic thereon is to some extent de destructive, therefore the prevention of unnecessary duplication and auto transportation service will lengthen the life of the highways and reduce the cost of maintenance. The revenue derived from the state will also tend toward public welfare by producing the expense uh, of, of those operating the, the private for gain some small cost of repairing the wear. So that's when they charge you excise tax and shit like that. That's the only time that you're supposed to be paying excise taxes if you're using your uh, car for the purpose of uh, financial gain, all right? So, and and I mean, usually it costs us money to fucking do anything. So, you know, who, who, who the fuck's making money when you're driving somewhere, bro? Come on. So, in the above, Justice Tolman expounded on the on the upon the key of raising revenue by taxing the privilege to use the public roads at the expense of those operating for gain. In this case, the word traffic is used in conjunction with the unnecessary auto transportation service, or in other words, vehicles for hire. The word traffic is another word which is to be strictly construed to the conducting of business. Traffic, uh, commerce, trade, sale, or exchange of merchandise, bills, money, or the like. The passing of goods and commodities from one person to another or the equivalent in the goods of money and shit like that. So judging by what the fuck I just read here, I can see how these little faggots would try to fucking say that you're operating in commerce if you even had dollar bills on you. All right. So they could technically construe you having money in your pocket as you operating in commerce just based on what I just read here. So that's one thing that you should know. Okay. So here again, notice that the that this definition refers to one conducting business. No mention is made of one who is traveling in his automobile. This definition is one who is engaged in the passing of a commodity, goods or exchange for money, vehicles for hire. Furthermore, the word traffic and travel must be must have different meanings, which the count recognize. The difference is recognized. OK, in addition to this, cabs, hackney coaches, omnibuses, taxi cabs and hacks when unnecessarily numerous interfere with the ordinary traffic and travel and obstruct them. 
All right, so the court, by using both terms, signified its recognition of a distinction between the two. But what was the distinction? We have already defined both terms now to nail the matter down. The word traffic is manifestly used here in secondary sense and has reference to the business of transportation rather than to its primary meaning or interchange commodities. Okay, so here the Supreme Court of the state of Washington has defined the word traffic uh, in either its primary or secondary sense in reference to business and not to mere travel. So it is clear that the term traffic and business related to therefore is a privilege. Uh, the net result being the traffic is brought under the police power under the legislature. The term has no application. One who is not using the roads as a source of income or a place of business. Okay. License. It seems only proper to define the word license as the definition of the words will be extremely important in understanding the statutes as they are properly applied. The permission by competent authority to do an act, uh, without permission would be illegal. So a license essentially needs to be issued to somebody who, if they otherwise didn't have it, it would be an illegal uh, trespass. So it's not illegal to travel in a vehicle, uh, excuse me, automobile for private use, pleasure or whatever have you. So why the fuck would you need a fucking license, right? Like a license to kill, right? That's because killing somebody would be illegal. So you need a fucking license to be able to do that right you get that so it's all you know it's already fucking retarded anyway the way the way it sits but this is just to clarify for everybody so leave to do a thing without without licensure could prevent so and you can't convert i mean we already went over this you cannot convert a right into a crime it doesn't work like that. In order for these two definitions to apply in this case, the state would have to prove the position that the exercise of a constitutional right to use the public roads in the ordinary course of life and business is illegal. A trespass or a tort, which the state could, uh, could then regulate or prevent. This position, however, would raise constitutional questions as this position would be diametrically opposed to the fundamental constitutional law. And it would be fucking extremely uh, on the other end of the spectrum and way out of their fucking delegated authority. Their privilege of the delegated authority that they've been granted by the people. Okay? So, in that, in the instant case, the proper definition of a license is... Let's see what it is. Let's see what it is. A permit granted by an appropriate governmental body, generally for consideration to a person, firm, a corporation to pursue some occupation or to carry on some business, which is subject to regulation under the police power. Okay. Only time you need a fucking license is when you feel that you need to be regulated for what the fuck that you're doing. And they can only regulate commerce. All right. So they want you to forfeit your fucking God given right by getting a license. And then, they, and then they somehow make you think that they have the fucking power to take it away from you and tell you that you cannot travel any longer. That shit is, couldn't be further from the truth. And as a matter of fact, make them say that shit. If that's what the fuck that they're claiming, make them say that shit, put it on paper and sign that shit. You, I guarantee you, you will not find one of these pieces of shit willing to put their fucking life on the line for that shit because it's a fucking lie. It's a straight fucking lie. All right. The definition will fall more in the line of privilege or carrying on business on the streets. Most people tend to think that licensing is imposed by the state for the purpose of raising revenue. Yet, uh, yet may well be more subtle reasons uh, contemplated. For when one seeks permission from someone to do something, he invokes the jurisdiction of the licensor. Right. Which in this case is the state. In essence, the licensee may well be seeking to be regulated by the licensor. And that's what it is. And they have us all programmed to believe that we need to fucking have one. So everybody goes and fucking gets one. All right. At that point, then you're becoming a subject of the person who essentially gave you that in the place of your uh, God given rights. And now you gave your rights over to a fucking man. Yeah, right. A license fee is charged made primarily for regulation. Uh with the fee to cover the cost, expenses, and supervision of uh, regulation. The fee is the price. The regulation or control of the license, which is the real aim of the legislation. Uh, are these licenses really useful? 
to fund legitimate government or are they uh, or are they nothing more than a subtle introduction of police power into every facet of our lives? Have our enforcement agencies been diverted from crime prevention, perhaps through no fault of their own, now buying themselves as they check our papers to see that they are properly endorsed by the state? Okay. So you got to understand that a lot of these people have been brainwashed just as well and they believe that they're doing the right thing, but they are not doing the right thing. Okay. And they don't even hire the, you know, if your IQ is above a certain point, you're not going to be able to become a cop because you're going to be able to see through their fucking bullshit. They don't, they don't hire the sharpest tools in the shed for that, for that reason. Okay. At which legislative session will it be before we are forced to get a license for lawnmowers, generators, tillers, and air conditioners before women are required to have a license for their blender or mixer? Okay. All have motors on them and the state can always use the revenue. At what point does the steady encroachment into our liberty cease? All right. So police power, the confusion of the police power with the power of taxation usually arises in the case where police power has affixed a penalty to a certain act or a mission to act or where it requires to be obtained by a certain sum paid for a certain occupation. Right. You know what's funny, right? They're going to take away your fucking your fucking license because you didn't pay money. Oh, so you must not be a safe driver. But hey, look, you ran a fucking stop sign and now uh, you could have killed somebody. But hey, listen, you just throw us like 50 bucks and we'll call it a day. Bro, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. So the power used in the instinct can... can <laughs> you know what I'm saying, though? Get the fuck out of here, bro. Am I a danger or am I not? If I pay you, then I'm then everything's fine. I'll act like, act like I never ran a stop sign. I never ran the red light. And I can pay you and everything will be fine. Bro, shut the fuck up, bro. Shut the fuck up. The power used in the instant case cannot, however, be the power of taxation since in... Attempt to levy a tax upon a right would be a constitutional objection. Each law relating to legitimate use of police power must ask these three questions. And we'll get into what these are right now. Right now. So let's get into this one. It says, uh, is there any threatened danger does a regulation involve a constitutional right is regulation reasonable okay ask yourself those three questions so when applying these three questions to the statute in question some very important issues are clarified first is there a threatened danger in the individual using the automobile uh, automobile on the public highways in order in the ordinary course of life and business the answer is no there is nothing inherently dangerous in the use of an automobile when it is carefully managed. Their guidance, speed, noise are subject to a quick and easy control under a competent, considerate manager. It has a, uh, it has a harmless on the road as a horse or buggy, possibly more so. It is the manner of the managing of the automobile and that alone which threatens the safety of the public. The ability to stop quickly and to respond quickly guidance would seem to make the automobile one of the least dangerous conveyances. The automobile is not inherently dangerous. To deprive all persons of the right to use the road in the ordinary course of life and business uh, because one might in the future become dangerous would be a deprivation not only to the right of travel but also to the right of due process. Next, does the regulation involve a constitutional right? The question has already been addressed and the answer in this brief uh, and not to be reinforced other than to remind the court that this citizen does have the right to travel upon the public highway by automobile in the ordinary course of life and business. It can therefore be exclaimed that the regulations uh, does involve the constitutional right. The third question is the most important in this case. Uh, is this regulation reasonable? I don't believe it's reasonable. Personally, I do not believe it's reasonable or fucking mandatory. It's certainly not mandatory either. All right. And that's something that you need to know. Because they've gotten real comfortable with fucking acting like they know what the fuck they're talking about. For people who never read the law, they, are, they have a lot to fucking say. I have a lot to say. So the essential elements of due process are law, notice, and the opportunity to defend. Yet, not one of these individuals has ever been given notice of their loss of his or her right before signing the license contract, nor was the citizen given any opportunity to defend against the loss of his or her right to travel by automobile on the highways in the ordinary course of life and business. This amounts to an arbitrary agreement, uh, arbitrary government deprivation of liberty. There should be no arbitrary deprivation of life or liberty. 
The right to travel is a part of the liberty of which a citizen cannot be deprived without due process of law under the Fifth Amendment. This right was emerging as clear as early as the Magna Carta. The focal point of this of this uh, question of police power and due process must balance the point of making the public highways a safe place for the public to travel. If a man travels in a manner that creates actual damage, an action in law would be the appropriate remedy, civilly, for recovery of damages. The state could then also proceed against the individual to deprive him or, or, or her of his rights to use the public highways for cause, because then they would have a reason. It wouldn't just be because you owed them money, okay? Oh, really? So I pay you fucking scumbags and then I can drive on the road that is mine anyway? Yeah, right, bro. So this process would fulfill the due process requirements of the Fifth Amendment while at the same time ensuring that the rights guaranteed by the Constitution for the United States of America uh, and the respective state constitutions would be protected for all. But unless or until harm or damage a crime is committed, there is no cause for interference uh, in the in the private affairs or actions of a sovereign uh, man or woman, okay? So one of the most famous and perhaps the most quoted definitions of due process of law is that Daniel Webster in his Dartmouth College, uh, in which he declared due process of law, a law which hears before it condemns, which proceeds upon inquiry and renders the judgment only after trial. So you would literally have to have a trial before they could even do that shit. So somewhat similar in the statement, that is a rule as old as the law, no one shall be personally bound, restricted, until he has had his day in court, until he has been duly summoned to appear, and has, a, has been afforded an opportunity to be heard. Judgment without such summons, uh, opportunity lacks all the attributes of a judicial determination. It is judicial usurpation, and this is how they're getting past actually having to give anybody due process of law, is by pulling, that, pulling these fucking stunts on people. And making them think that they have the right to even to even be fucking with them in the first place. All right, let's get into this next slide. So defined as applying only those who are conducting business in the streets or operating uh, for higher vehicles. The legislature has attempted by legislative, uh, legislative fiat to deprive the citizens of his right to use the roads in the ordinary course of life and business without affording the citizen the safeguard of due process of law. This has been accomplished under supposed powers of regulations. Regulation, in addition to the requirement that regulation, uh, regulations governing the use of the highways must not be violative of constitutional guarantees, excuse me, the prime essentials of such regulations are reasonableness, impartiality, and definiteness or, or certainty. Okay, so moreover, a distinction must be observed between the regulation of an activity which may be engaged in as a matter of right or one carried by the governmental sufferance of permission. All right, Davis, Davis versus Massachusetts. That's where I'm from, Lawrence Mass. You guys know what time it is. 167 US 43. Uh, one can say for certain that these regulations are impartial since they are being applied to all, even though they are clearly beyond the limits of the legislature power. However, we must consider whether such regulations are reasonable and non-violative -viol uh, of constitutional guarantees. First, let us consider the reasonableness of this statute requiring all persons to be licensed, presuming that we are all applying the statute to all persons using the public roads. In determining the reasonableness of the statute, we need only ask two questions. Does the statute accomplish the stated goal? The answer is no. The attempted explanation for this regulation to ensure the safety of the public by ensuring as much as possible that they are all competent and qualified. And who's even fucking regulating this shit? You got some fucking asshole, probably a pervert, pedophile fuck telling you what you can and can't do? Really, bro? Yeah, I don't, yeah. Definitely not, bro. So, however, one can keep his license without resetting from time to, from time, he or she is the first license until the day that he or she dies without regard to the competency of the person by merely renewing said license before it expires. And that's the thing. So you got people that are fucking 95 years old that you claim are fucking, are, are deemed fucking safe, safe drivers when all they have to do is fucking pay you. So as long as they pay you, 
then they're fucking safe drivers. But if they don't pay you, then, oh, we got to fucking throw them in jail and fucking arrest them if we catch them uh, traveling. Yeah, right, bro. So it is therefore possible to, to completely skirt the goal of this attempted regulation, trying to imply that by somebody fucking paying a simple fucking penalty every goddamn year or every five or six years, that that is somehow making them a safe driver. All right. That's just bullshit. Get the fuck out of here with that. So thus, proving that this regulation does not accomplish its goal, if we uh, analyze where, if analysis was compiled of all the accidents between those individuals having a license and those not having a license, what do we got here? Guess who the fuck would be the ones that are actually causing the fucking problems? All right? It's not the unlicensed drivers that are fucking crashing into everybody. All right? So here would reveal that the highest percentage of accidents were had by those that had licenses. A license does not, and in and of itself, guarantee the safety of the general public, much like a license to practice law, which doesn't fucking exist. There's no such thing as a license to practice law. Somebody fucking show them. Matter of fact, email me one if you fucking think you have a license to practice law. All you fucking clowns, you lawyers and fucking fake ass judges. All right? Fucking pretending to have a fucking license to practice law. Show me that shit. The fuck out of here with that stupid ass bullshit. Or medicine assure that only competent lawyers and doctors ply their trade. A review of the annual malpractice lawsuits is the only proof necessary to establish that it does not. Furthermore, by testing and licensing, the state gives that appearance of underwriting the confidence of licenses and could therefore be held liable for failures, accidents caused by licenses as the state has certified through the issuance of licenses and that the individual is competent, supposedly. Is the statute reasonable? Absolutely not. The statute cannot be determined to be reasonable since it requires a citizen to give up his, his or her natural right to travel unrestricted in order to accept the privilege. That shit don't even fucking make sense, okay? The purported goal of the statute could be met by much less oppressive regulations, competency tests, certificates of competency before using an automobile upon the public roads. This is exactly the situation in the uh, aviation sector. But isn't this what we have now? The answer is no. The real purpose of the license is much more insidious uh, when one signs the license, he or she uh, supposedly gives up his constitutional rights to travel in order to accept and exercise a mere privilege under a contract. After signing a license, a quasi-contract, the citizen has given the state his or her consent to be prosecuted for constructive crimes and quasi-criminal actions when there is no harm done and no damaged party. The uh, prosecutions take place without affording the citizen their uh, constitutional rights and guarantees such by the right to trial by jury of 12 persons and the right to counsel as well as the normal safeguards such as proof of intent, corpus delecti, which would be an inter-party, and the grand jury indictment. The unconstitutional uh, prosecutions take place because the citizen is exercising a privilege. A privilege, huh? Supposedly a privilege. What a privilege. What a privilege to be governed by you fucking clowns. Get the fuck out of here, bro. The f really, really get the fuck out of here, bro. Get the fuck out of here. Fucking morons, bro. Has given his or her implied consent to legislative enactments designed to control interstate commerce, a regulated enterprise under the police power of the state. We must now conclude that the citizen is forced to give up constitutional guarantees of right in order to exercise his state privilege to travel upon the public highways in the ordinary course of life and business. Yeah, right, bro. Yeah, right, bro. Surrender of rights. A citizen cannot be forced to give up his or her rights in the name of regulation. The only limitations found restricting the right of the state to condition the use of public highways as mean of vehicular transportation for compensation. One, that he must not exact uh of those permits the uh to use the highway for hauling for gain that they surrender any of their inherent u.s constitutional rights as a condition precedent to obtaining permission for such use only in the uh in the if you're going to be using it for commerce really that simple commercial use if one cannot be placed in a position of being forced to surrender rights in order to exercise a privilege how how much more must this maximum of law then apply when one simply exercising putting into use a right to be that statute which would deprive a citizen of the rights or personal property without a regular trial according to the course of usage and uh, common law would not be the law of the land. It wouldn't be. It would be the law of some fucking random man. Alright? That, that's what the fuck that is. 
So we find it intolerable that one constitutional right should have to be surrendered in order to assert another. Since the state requires that one give up his rights in order to exercise the privilege of driving, the regulation cannot stand under the police power. Due process or regulation must be exposed as a statute which is oppressive and one which has been misapplied to deprive the citizen uh, rights guaranteed under the United States Constitution and the state constitution. Now the taxing power. Any claim that this statute is a taxing statute would be immediately open to serve constitutional objections. If it could be said that the state has the power uh, to tax a right, then that would enable the state to destroy rights guaranteed by the Constitution through the use of oppressive taxation, which is exactly what the fuck that they do. All right. So the question herein is the one uh, is one of the state taxing the right to travel by the ordinary modes of the day and whether or not this is a legislative. Uh, this is a legislate, uh, legislative object of the state of taxation. And that's exactly what that is, just so you know. Because these people have only been delegated the privilege of authority to regulate commerce. Therefore, they, at whatever the fuck point, turn that shit into some type of uh, fucking weapon against the people. All right? So that's a big fucking problem. So the views advanced herein are neither novel nor supported by authority. The Supreme Court has, re has repeatedly considered the question of taxing power of the states, the right of the state to impede or embarrass the constitutional operation of the U.S. government or the rights of the citizen holds under it uh, has been uniformly denied. So the power to tax is the power to destroy. If he, the, if the state is given the power to destroy rights through taxation, the framers of the constitutions wrote that document in vain, right? So it may be said that a tax of one dollar for passing through the state cannot be sensi cannot sensibly affect any function of government or deprive a citizen of any valuable right. But if a state can tax a passenger of one dollar, it can tax him of one thousand dollars. All right. So all them fucking tolls that you see everywhere, do not even pay for the roads. All right. What's paying for all the fucking is your is your uh what the fuck is it called sales tax sales tax is what's really paying for all that shit all right everything else is going right into these fucking assholes pockets all right and tell them to fucking show you the books so if the right of passing through a state by a citizen of the united states is one guaranteed by the constitution it must be sacred from state taxation Okay, so therefore the right of travel must be kept sacred from all forms of state taxation And if this argument is used by the state as a defense of the enforcement of the statute, then this argument also must fail Conversa uh, Conversion of a right to a crime As previously demonstrated, the citizen has the right to travel and to transport his property upon the public highways in the ordinary use of life and business However, if one exercises this right to travel without first giving up the right and converting that right into a privilege the citizen is by statute guilty of a crime. Yeah, fucking right, bro. So this amounts to converting the exercise of a constitutional right into a crime. Recall the Miller versus United States. Uh, the state cannot diminish the rights of the people. It can't. It doesn't even have the fucking power to do that. It's not even in there. It's, it's, it was never dealt. They, they don't have that fucking power. All right. The agencies that fucking employ these fucking assholes don't even have that power. So how the fuck do you have it? Get the fuck out of here, bro. So where rights secured by the constitutions are involved, there can be no rulemaking or legislation which would abrogate them, okay? So indeed, the very purpose for creating the state under the limitations of the constitution was to protect the uh, rights of the people from intrusion, particularly by the forces of government, all right? So, I mean, I don't know if you can tell what the fuck's going on here, but there's a lot going on here, all right? A lot going on here. Next slide. So you can see that any attempt by the legislature to make uh, the act of using the public highways as a right of matter into a crime is void upon its face. Any person who claims his right to travel upon the highways uh, and so exercises that right cannot be tried for a crime of doing so. And yet the Surrey jury stands before this court today answering charges for the crime of exercising his right to liberty. As we have already shown, the term drive can only apply to those who are employed by the business of transportation for hire. It has been shown that freedom that freedom includes the citizen's right to use the public highway in the ordinary course of life and business without license or regulation by the police powers of the state. Okay. Another good question to ask these people when you're in court is, if, especially if you live in a commonwealth, is what the fuck is the state police doing in a commonwealth? Is it a state or is it a fucking commonwealth? So why the fuck would there be state police and a fucking commonwealth? It doesn't fucking make any sense. All right. Use your fucking head. 
So, title of nobility. The Constitution for the United States of America at Article 1, Section 10, Clause 1, prohibits the grant of a title of nobility. No state shall grant a title of nobility. Since the granting of a title of nobility is absolutely prohibited, this court lacks subject matter jurisdiction to enforce a title of nobility and its attendant rules and regulations. The Utah Supreme Court has stated the ability to drive a motor vehicle on a public roadway is not a fundamental right, but a revocable privilege. Okay, the distinctive appellation uh, designation or title driver is a title of privilege, a title of noble privilege, a title of nobility. They don't they don't have the authority to grant anybody that shit. So in the, uh, a title of nobility as defined to nominate to uh, to an order of persons to whom privileges are granted. Objection to a title of nobility arises from the special privileges that attach to the title rather than to the title itself. Words and phrases. Uh, volume 8A, page 40, a driver's license is a privilege which is granted by the state, a municipal corporation. Now you tell me how the fuck a public servant has the authority to grant you fucking nobility, bro. They're fucking beneath you. They're literally fucking beneath you. By, by fucking definition, by title, and by a fucking job. Who the fuck are they gonna tell to do what, bro? Come on. Be real. Let's fucking be real. So, Constitution in Article 1, Section 10 prohibits the states from granting a title of nobility, driver's license, and its attendant rules and regulations. Pursuant to City of Selena versus Wisden, the driver's license and its attendant rules and regulations are, by legal definition, a title of nobility. Article 1, Section 10 of the United States Constitution prohibits the state from granting title of nobility. The court lacks subject matter jurisdiction to enforce the uh, defendant a title of nobility. What is prohibited to the states is forbidden to the court to enforce all right so it's not even within their fucking jurisdiction they can't even hear that shit all right so therefore the accused requests the courts to make legal determination as to what is a title of nobility the following case law will define a title of nobility for the court to use to make its determination the following quotes give the answer nobility a order of man in several countries to whom special privileges are granted at the expense of the rest of the people all right okay so to confer a title of nobility is to nominate to an order of persons to whom privileges are granted at the expense of the rest of the people. It is not necessarily hereditary that the objection to it arises more than the privileges supposed to be attached to that otherwise empty title, right? So government granted entitlement privileges such as driver's licenses and its privileges are obviously noble entitlements and franchises as pointed out by richard b stewart left-wing politician okay so you guys see what the fuck's going on here you see what's really going on so this is what's really fucking going on couple more slides here so the third great innovation in american administrative law which has largely occurred during the past 20 years extended the procedural controls and principles of judicial review developed in the context of regulatory decision making to the operations of the welfare state including programs of government insurance and assistance government employment decisions and the administration of government grants and contracts under traditional private law principles, these benefits were privileges and not rights because their withholding did not constitute the commission of a tort or other natural law wrong against a disappointed applicant or a terminated recipient with the growth of post-World War II welfare state, the distinction between rights and privileges gradually eroded. Statutes conveying uh, these various benefits and advantages were held by the courts cre uh, created the entitlements. The limits of administrative law in the court separation of powers they they don't even have that fucking power the constitution for the united states of america article 1 section 10 clause 1 mandates no still no state shall grant any title of nobility so the establishment the prohibition of titles of nobility are perhaps greater securities of liberty and republicanism than any the national constitution contains nothing need uh need be said to illustrate the importance of the prohibition of titles of nobility this may truly be denominated the uh 
this may truly be denominated by the cornerstone of the Republican government. For so long as they are excluded, there can never be serious danger that the government will be any other than that of the people. Okay? People are the government. We are the state. So, a title of nobility is privilege of license, and license of privileges otherwise such as nobility cease to exist without such privilege of license and license of privilege. A license to drive is a title of nobility in that it is a special grant or privilege to use the roads upon the public highways and roads. So says the Utah Supreme Court cited in Selena versus Wisden Supra. The state of, whatever the fuck, falsely accusing, uh, granting the title of nobility when it takes away natural existing public or private right forbidding a natural activity or occupation to all then turns around and specially grants it back to a few and many the special privilege to engage in that activity or occupation requiring that obtaining of a title of noble privilege right to drive vehicles and obeying attending nobility rules as applied to the see what we got See what we got here. Apply to the accused is contrary to the Constitution for the United States of America. Mandate Article 1, Section 10, Clause 1. No state shall grant any title of nobility. All right. All, uh, all attended nobility traffic rules, regulations, and penalties made pursuant to such is to the contrary of the mandate of the Constitution of the United States of America, lest we be corporate slaves. And notwithstanding and void by mere operation of law upon this record as applied to the accused, hence and counts lacks, lacks subject matter jurisdiction because of the prohibition of titles of nobility, attendant rules, regulations, and penalties. The conclusion is... It is the duty of the courts to recognize the substance of things and not the mere form. All right, the uh, the courts are not the courts are not bound by mere form, nor are they misled by mere pretenses. They are at liberty, indeed. They are under a solemn duty to look at the substance of things, whether they enter into the inquiry, whether the legislature has transceded the limits of its authority, which it fucking does, because even even the fucking legislature only has the power to regulate commerce. So what in the fuck are they going to tell a private man about what he does in his private life? Get the fuck out of here. How about that one? So if therefore a statute purported to have been enacted and to protect the public safety has no real substantial relation to those objects or is palpable invasion of rights secured by the fundamental law, it is the duty of the courts to so adjudge and thereby give effect to the Constitution. Okay, so it is the duty of the court to be watchful for the constitutional right of the citizen against any stealthy encroachment thereon. No higher duty of this court exists than to recognize and stop the stealthy encroachments which have been made upon a citizen's right to travel and to use the road to transport his property in the ordinary course of life and business. Further, the court must recognize that the right to travel is part of the liberty of which a citizen cannot be deprived of without specific cause and without the due process of law guaranteed in the Fifth Amendment. The history of this invasion of the citizen's right to use the public highway shows clearly that the, that the legislature simply found a hereto, a herefore untapped source of revenue, became greedy and attempted to enforce a statute in an, unco an unconstitutional manner upon those free and natural men. All right. Way out of fucking line just for a couple dollars. So what else? Were, what else have they been doing for fucking money? Huh? What else have these motherfuckers been doing for a couple bucks? You know what I'm saying? So the act in question is a valid regulation and as such a binding and is such binding upon all those who use the highway for the purpose of private gain. Any any other construction of this statute would render it unconstitutional as applied to the citizen or any citizen. The accused therefore moves this court to abate this action or an alternative to dismiss the charge against him with prejudice pursuant to the federal rule of evidence 301 and attending state rules. The burden now rests with the plaintiff to bring forward the evidence and rebuttal of any fact stated herein by the defendant with law and great speci specificity, not merely verbiage and uh, personal convictions and beliefs of the agency's biased legal counsel. And what the fuck do these clowns even know? It don't matter what the fuck that they even think. Nobody gives a fuck what they think and nobody's asking them what the fuck that they think. All right, this is a fucking statement here and you're putting the ball back in their court to fucking do the right thing or not. Get a new fucking job then if you don't fucking like your job. Really that simple. Defendant believes that he has a right 
that he has made a compelling case in support of his petition for abatement with sound law and legal theory and request that if the court rules adverse to the legal theory that the judge submit a written opinion and conclusion of law defending errors in the defendant's legal reasoning and therefore so that a clear defined legal obligation uh, of the defendant to comply with the existing state statutes relative to his constitutional right to travel is understood and established as a matter of law for the accused at the public at large declaration i declare on the penalty of perjury under the laws of the united states of america that the foregoing is true and correct to the best of my knowledge all right so this is going to be right there on the end of the fucking um affidavit and this is how things have to be served to these dickheads too it has to be in the form of an affidavit to put them on to put them on uh, put them on notice properly all right and this is the last part here that you have it served by a uh what do you call it a notary and you get your fucking judgment there by the fucking magistrate, which is the uh, which is the notary, and they are gonna acquiesce into your into your fucking judgment. And if they don't, then you just go to the next court and make sure that you fucking hold these people liable and fucking accountable for all the bullshit that they that they're pulling. And is this shit real? Absolutely. Why don't you call the Supreme Court clerk and ask them if this shit's real? It's real. It's it's really a thing. The only people who don't think it's a thing are the people who have a fucking interest in robbing you and trying to fucking throw you in jail or pulling you over and fucking stealing your money and stealing whatever the fuck else that they can get from you. Those are the only people who would tell you that this shit is wrong and people who never fucking studied law. All right. So it is a game of chess. Stop playing checkers with these fucking faggots. That's what I got for you for now until we meet again.